Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you and welcome to Islam and Life with me, Tariq Ramadan, broadcasting from London. In today's show and on the special occasion of Ramadan, we ask the question, what is the purpose of fasting in Ramadan? While length and rules differ, the act of fasting and abstainment from food or certain types of food is prescribed by all major world religions today. One of the pillars of the religion of Islam is indeed fasting whereby Muslims are told to fast from dawn till dusk for a period of 30 days in a month named Ramadan. Though it may seem a harsh or peculiar act, fasting in Islam is performed to attain closeness to Allah and has been described as one of the best deeds by Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. While it is an act of spiritual discipline, fasting also provides experience of hunger and thirst and thus develops a deeper understanding and sympathy to those in poorer parts of the world. This week's Islam and Life asks, what is the purpose of fasting in Ramadan? This is a month where we fast. This is a month where we are preventing ourselves from eating, drinking, from anything which is not in fact connected to the spiritual life of the Muslim men and women, to be connected with God, with the one, to be serving the people, the poor people, but also the community. It's something which has to do with an individual take on one's spirituality, while at the same time showing solidarity towards human beings and Muslim brothers and sisters. So there is something here which is important to think about and to ponder over. When we are in our contemporary societies very often driven by consumerism, by materialistic concerns, by something which has much more to do with what we have, while fasting is very much about who we are and what we are trying to, who we are trying to be. These are uh, important concerns and questions are coming out of that. What is the purpose? What are we trying to do? Are we just trying to prevent ourselves from drinking and eating or is it deeper than that? And if it's deeper than that, what could be the contribution of the contemporary Muslim conscience in our world where we have global capitalism, when we have a global culture, when we have globalization in many ways. It has to do with culture, it has to do with consumerism. What is the very essence of Ramadan in the light of the contemporary challenges? This is the central question and so many others. And to answer all these questions, I'm joined by my guest, Islamic scholar, Sheikh Mohammed Raza. Thank you so much for being with us. I set as an introduction lots of questions because at the end it's true that Ramadan has an essential meaning for Muslims but with time it can get more meanings that we have to ponder over just to get the very essence of what it means to fast in this contemporary world. So before coming to this very question, the purpose of Ramadan in the light of our contemporary challenges and the contemporary societies, let us come to the fundamentals. How would you explain to, sometimes to Muslims themselves and for people of other faiths, what is the essence of fasting in Ramadan or during Ramadan? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tariq Ramadan, for having me in this program. I know that uh, this is a series which is loved by millions of Muslims all over the world. Thank you. And uh, your contribution is fundamentally so marvelous. You are quite right when we speak about the importance of fasting and benefits of fasting in this modern world. Uh, as it has been rightly explained, literally, uh, the word psalm or fasting means to abstain from eating, drinking, smoking and uh, having intimate conjugal relationship during the day during the day <laughs> from the dawn <laughs> until sunset yeah. uh, but if we just restrict the meaning of fasting to this literal interpretation perhaps uh, we will not be uh, achieving the real goals and objectives of fasting uh, fasting is more than that 
uh, in its moral and spiritual perspective. Uh, it brings hope uh, to, to all of us, to millions of Muslims, because we fast with the hope of receiving a reward for fasting. So the element of hope is there. Uh, and uh, this is something so powerful, so wonderful in a world where many, many people are hopeless. Hmm. They have lost their hope. So it brings, it uh, rekindles the light of hope for millions of Muslim brothers and sisters, young and old, who are fasting. So it teaches us that we should be optimistic, we should live a life of uh, optimism and we should not be living a life without a purpose or without a hope. At the same time, it brings faith into action. Uh, I understand that uh, in the present day, faith is being marginalized in so many ways. But fasting brings faith as something quite central into our lives. Uh, without faith, we may not be able to fast. I think you are raising a very important point here. The first, if we start with the end of what you are saying, uh, the essence of fasting is faith. It's just, I believe in God and in for the sake of God, I'm preventing myself from eating, drinking, and all what you uh, right. said. This is the starting point. And you said something which is essential here is, we have to reconnect anything that we are doing uh, for God with a sense of hope. Hope that we are going to be rewarded. This is something that you said. And also, also because it's part of why we are fasting, that our mistakes, our sins are going to be removed because we are doing something for the sake of God. So it's hope that in fact we can rely on him and he will help us. And, and the very essence of hope that you are putting here, it's something which is essential in our contemporary. In fact, it's essential as the very essence of religion. Religion is not about only rules, it's also about hope in the one who, we are, who is setting the That's rules. right. And then if we go, we push this when it comes to uh, during you know, people are fasting now and, and they are trying to pre purify, reform themselves. Uh, what would be the essential teachings and lessons that we need to uh, extract, to understand from fasting and in which way we have to deal with it? Because it's not only, as you said, preventing, it's something which is deeper. That's How do right. we get this deeper meaning? Um, by understanding, first of all, the purpose of fasting. And uh, there are many people who would say, look, if you have institutions like fasting in your religion, such a wonderful moral and spiritual exercise, so where are the benefits? Yeah. Why we do not see any of the fruits of fasting largely within the Muslim communities and societies. Uh, we talk about faith, about hope, about discipline, about willpower, about uh, having some sort of uh, discipline in our lives. But generally, these great values are not seen in our daily lives. So the answer to this question will be that before we fast, we need to understand the spiritual and moral purpose of fasting so that we may fully benefit of this exercise, of this spiritual exercise. It's quite interesting what you are saying. It's a paradoxical. What you are saying is that the more you understand the very meaning, the essence, the intimate dimension of what fasting is the more visible we are going to be. In fact, the less visible fasting is, the less 
understood the very meaning is. So what you are saying before is that faith is visible. Yeah. It's visible in the society. So now we are here in, in the UK, but it could be everywhere in the world. It could be in Muslim majority countries. It could be in the West. It would be in Africa. What should be visible? If you were to say, okay, we are fasting and we are in a world where, okay, we could talk about global culture, consumerism. Okay, what you think should be visible out of this deep faith and this understanding for the, in the world? Today? I, I, I believe that, for example, tolerance, patience, mercy, you mean more in Ramadan than in the... the, the, the of course, the, in why? Ramadan, we bring these values into action at an enhanced level so that outside Ramadan, we are practicing and observing these values in our daily lives, within our families, within our neighborhood, within the human uh, network we have around us and that is the importance of fasting. We become so engaged in the month of Ramadan with its exercise of experiencing hunger for example. Yes. So the, the world outside is suffering from hunger yes. and we after experiencing it temporarily during the day must be acting upon how to deal with this vast hunger or hungry world, mm. how to help them, how to deal with it, how to be more and more kind and merciful towards the humanity at large. So, so if I listen to you, a woman or a man, a Muslim woman, a Muslim man, when they are fasting, not only they have to prevent themselves from eating and drinking and anything which has to do, you know, smoking and all what we know, but then something should be visible. And what you said is, try during Ramadan to be more tolerant and respectful. Try during Ramadan to be more uh, show concern about poverty and people are, you know, facing hunger and this is something which is the, the essential, True. the essential word that we have during Ramadan is closeness to God and solidarity. That's right. So in the West, for example, many people are expecting the Muslims to be less visible. And they might think about dress and minarets as all what we got in the countries. What you are saying is that we need to think about a new type of visibility, which is based on these values. Of course. How can we translate this on the ground? I think that for that we need to educate our communities about the spiritual and moral impact of fasting and how can we practice it in our daily lives. Uh, of course, uh, the physical appearance of something is quite important, but at the same time the internal design of that particular institution matters a lot unless we become more human, unless we become more friendly, unless we become more disciplined in our lifestyle, how can we benefit from this great institution of fasting? Yes, that, that's, an important, uh, 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 that's an important point. What would you respond to someone telling you, you know what, uh, for example, living in Muslim majority countries or living in the West saying, some, they are visible by the fact that they are saying, oh, I'm fasting, so I'm tired, so sometimes I'm nervous, sometimes I'm not doing the, the work I'm, I should do at, at work because I'm fasting. So they are taking excuse because they are fasting uh, from doing the right thing at, you know, on, on the job uh, and everything which has to do with, you know, mm. their work and all this. Is this right? Is this the right? To, what, I, what would be your answer to people I would saying, be, I can't do more than yeah, that? I would be reluctant to accept these excuses for a Muslim in the month of Ramadan. Ramadan is not a month when 
we seek excuses hmm. for our laziness for our inactivity ramadan is a month when we become more active and at the same time we live in the society we live in a country as a normal a normal life hmm. uh, because worshiping god does not mean to detach ourselves from our normal human activities hmm. so perhaps uh, no excuses no excuses hmm. we should be efficient we should be smart we should be working normally and at the same time in addition to that we should be undertaking quite enjoyably the responsibility of fasting so that we could show to the world to our neighbors that islam or being a muslim is not something which is not practically possible in a western society where yeah, yeah. we live uh, and we should live as all other people live side by side yes in fact you are saying is exactly the opposite not only you should not find excuses you have to get with added value with your presence to be That's kind right. and, and to serve the people so which is in fact the whole process of ramadan is self control and mastering yourself and even if someone during ramadan is insulting you you have to respond by saying in nisaim i i am fasting i'm not going to respond to True. your attack i'm yes. not going to insult so it's all the whole process is there so the visibility should be even in the spiritual struggle which is a positive visibility Now the second question about this is what is happening now in the west and it's exactly the same in muslim majority countries it's in fact the whole spirit of ramadan is control is self control is mastering is a is a spiritual struggle is a spiritual jihad jihad in nafs of course if you look at what is happening now and this is why i want you to respond to the challenges of our time we see that the months of ramadan now this is where people are eating more so you know what is visible what is visible is the more consumerist side of the muslims and you have big markets in the west providing halal food for muslims and they know that during this month this is where they are going to buy more to be more uh, consumerist which is exactly the opposite of the, the the spirit of ramadan so so how can we change this what what's wrong with us during ramadan then this is what i was saying in the beginning yeah. that today ramadan or fasting means eating more wasting more spending more and becoming more irresponsible Hmm. this is completely against the moral and spiritual objective of fasting fasting means bringing some sort of balance and moderation in our lifestyle hmm. uh, that's why as we know fasting is something that determines that we are faithful publicly and in private mm-hmm. fasting means we abstain from eating during the day but after sunset we start eating so there is a message of moderation and balance in this institution and yes and we mustn't try to be over spending or over eating so there is something wrong in wasting yeah. the resources yes there is something wrong in this attitude which is just respecting the rules and betraying the spirit now let me come to you i'm an average muslim you have you are a scholar you have been working with the muslim communities let us be uh, practical what should i do now i'm fasting just to reconcile myself with the spirit of ramadan with the essence in practical terms what would you advise a muslim woman or a muslim man to do every day of ramadan just to be close to the spirit and not only respecting the rules 
simply i would repeat the advice which is there in sharia in the seerah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and in the history of islam that while fasting we must be cultivating faith how hope. in practical terms uh, that's fine i know yeah. all that but tell me how i yeah. can do that how can i cultivate becoming hope? more conscious yeah. of moral and spiritual behavior and character in our daily lives like what during ramadan if you want you would advise someone to yeah. do what to to be cool to be friendly <laughs> to be more human yeah. to be honest to be more and more trying to be merciful and kind towards our children so to towards reform our your characters yeah? mm -hmm. towards our parents towards our wives and husbands so that we show it practically that look this is the month of ramadan and we are trying to observe these great values of human and spiritual and moral uh, implications thank you so much i think that once again in this discussion it was quite interesting to listen to you because from the very beginning what you you said is uh, reminding the people the rules might and should be also connected to reminding them of exactly what is the question of our program today is what is the purpose what are we trying to to achieve and then the most important thing is to understand that behind the rules there is the very essence of ramadan and what you said is to be practical in fact is to nurture is to reform the self by understanding in which way we are close to god to be kind you said to be cool to respect the parents all this it's part of ramadan and then also to think about a new type of visibility and this new type of visibility is based on solidarity is based on is based on kindness That's on right. humanity on serving the people which is what the muslims should understand uh, with ramadan the purpose is to be better the purpose is not to eat less during the day in order to eat more during the night which is all, all in fact betraying the very spirit of That's the mountain right. and, and what you said is very important for every one of us in fact every one of us should do this go through this journey the spiritual journey to get the essence of uh, ramadan well that's all we have time for please let us know your thoughts and views on any of the shows we have seen and here is the way to contact us islam and life welcomes your opinion so please send us your suggestions as well as criticism on any of the shows you've seen or would like to see. You can share your thoughts with other Islam and Life fans, engage with debate and view past shows on our social media platforms. Tweet us at Islam and Life TV or join us on Facebook by liking our page Islam and Life on Press TV. Finally, I would like to thank my guest, Sheikh Mohammed Raza. Thank you so much for being with us, for your kindness during this month, which is the visible side of uh, fasting. And I hope to see you next week, inshallah.